Great. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Town of Fairfield's uh, May meeting for the Board of Finance. Our large item tonight is, and our statutory item tonight, is to set the mill rate for the next fiscal year based on the budget process. Would everybody please rise? And I'm going to ask our Chief Fiscal Officer, Mr. Mayor, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. As I indicated in my opening remarks, um, the first item on the agenda tonight is to set the mill rate for the fiscal year beginning July 2016 through June 2017. That would be based on the budget approved by the RTM earlier this week. The second item would be um, to act upon some expense list items for our tax collectors here this evening. Uh, always a gripping conversation, those suspense items. Uh, the third item is uh, the Fairfield Ludlow High School Building Committee is going to talk to us tonight about a resolution regarding um, the windows replacement. The fourth item is to hear and consider and approve the appointment of auditors for the next uh, fiscal year. The fifth item is uh, related to the transfer of funds from IT contingency to IT capital outlay of about $90,000. And the last item is uh, a review of the minutes from many me meetings uh, and approval of those minutes. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns from board members before I start this evening? Mr. Hoffman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, you said that the uh, mill rate is our first item on the agenda. It is. Um, the first selectman can't be here right now. He's got a conflict, another meeting in town that he's attending. I think his presence here would be pretty important, his input on how various issues might affect the town. I'd like to ask or actually move that we postpone hearing that until later in the meeting when he can be here. Do you have a specific um, item? What number would you like to move it to? Do you have any thoughts on that? I'd like to move it to, um, to number six. To number six. Do we have a second to that? Okay, anybody have any questions, comments? I have some questions. Sure. Where's the first selection? There is a Holocaust commemoration this evening, and he is being asked to speak. He will do his bit there, and he will come here. What time is he speaking? Well, that meeting is going on as we speak. I don't know exactly when he's speaking, but I know he did tell me that he thought he could be here very shortly. By shortly, did he give you an estimated time? No. Else? Obviously, if we get to number six and he's not here, I mean, we can speak about it again, but I think we can give him the respect of waiting a few, just a little bit, because we do have other items on the agenda we can be taken care of. Okay. Anybody else? I'd like to hear from him. I agree. I think maybe we should hear from him, but I think we should just hear from him as soon as he arrives, the very next item. As soon as he arrives, the very next item, we, 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 we deal with it. All right. That's fine. Okay. So all in favor of moving this later on the agenda, we'll say number six, and then we'll move it forward. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? That's what we'll do. Thank you. All right. Let's uh, go to the most gripping item of the night. The uh, Here, consider and act upon the suspense list from the tax collector. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Go right ahead. Um, okay. Uh, it's a statutory requirement every year for the tax uh, office to go through its list and to examine the uncollected taxes and make a list of the taxes that we feel are uncollectible through our office. Um, all of these are accounts that have over the years either had no response at all, or um, the mail continuously be, is returned. We have turned some of them over to a collection agency. Um, we still haven't been able to collect them. So the way the statute is that we can deem these as uncollectible, ask the Board of Finance to approve them, 
and then they get taken off the collectible taxes for the town. Because if you leave them on, it's kind of a false impression that we can collect them, and we've done everything we can, and really there's no reason to keep sending delinquent statements if you know they're going to keep coming back, that type of thing. So we prepare a list, and the list was submitted to you a little earlier this week, I believe, mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of them are like bankruptcies or uncollectible businesses that have closed. So once the list is approved, they're taken out of our collectible list. That doesn't mean that if we find them, we can still collect the tax. And we do have a breakdown in our reporting that shows the suspense items that have been collected. So it's not a large percentage, but anything we find, we're happy to take, to take that money. And so all this is is really a formality to make our collectible rate, the amount that we can collect, a more realistic number. Thank you. Do we have questions or comments from board members? Mr. Hopkins. Um, I want to ask, if you, as you say, you do collection activity, you send letters and you try to collect, um, if those are not successful, do you follow up with an effort to ever to seize property and take it? Like if somebody say somebody has a car, that they owe money on. Do you ever do something to have somebody? No. No, we can't. We, we can't possess a car. Why not? I mean, a, a, we can put a boot on it. We can, but I don't think anything in. We can sell real estate, but I don't know of anybody that has tried to possess a car. So. All right. Do Do you know? Is there any provision under state law for a town to be able to do that? I mean, or are we just left to the normal civil? means of collecting a debt? Well, I would say I haven't, you know, I can research the statute for you. I'm happy to do that. And I'm sure if it was possible, somebody would have done it. Um, because motor vehicle is actually the hardest to collect once people leave the state. So a lot of these that are on this list, the cars are not even registered anymore. So it's not like we could even identify them. So once most of these are, um, the ones that are in the newer grand list years usually are due to bankruptcy. If somebody claims bankruptcy and that bankrupt bankruptcy is discharged and they don't have to pay the tax, there's nothing that we can do about it. So people can discharge their property tax obligations in bankruptcy? Only they're unsecured. Motor vehicle is unsecured. But anything that has a lien, such as real estate or sewer use, is a secured tax. So no matter what their bankruptcy outcome is, those taxes still get paid. But motor vehicle taxes can be discharged, and then you, they don't have to pay those. Do you have some kind of follow-up as to, because you said a lot of these people are, have now moved out of state or far away, do you have some kind of way of knowing that they've moved out of state? Are they registered somewhere else now? Or we don't like have that? that access to that information. However, we do turn it over to a collection agency and they do skip tracing. And they actually find a lot of people out of state because that's their entire business. We have a total of about 55,000 motor vehicle bills every year. So we have about a 97% collection rate. But that's still a lot of bills that come back. We do find a tremendous amount of people just through our work, our research, and we remail those bills out. Most of these are all older bills. They're bills that people we couldn't find or we lost contact. They no longer have their cars registered in Connecticut. We do have a direct access to DMV, so we do look for them on DMV, and we look for their addresses and see if they've registered any other cars. We do that as a matter of uh, policy and procedure in our office. But once we put a certain amount of effort into finding them and we still don't find them, then we turn them over for collection in hopes that the collection agency can find them. If they can't find them, then they usually get put on the suspense list. Isn't there a procedure to put some kind of a lien on a car, though, if you know that it's here? Not a lien. A lien, a, a lien that's on the property most municipalities either do a boot um, or they do towing. They tow the cars with a warrant. 
Well, I would question that. I know, I've, I, and I can't say I'm, I'm familiar with the statute, but I, I have been in other towns where the tax collector has had um, constables or marshals go out and deliver liens of some kinds on the car. So I'd be oh, interested in knowing if there's something akin to that that at least might help with that. Well, there's um, an alias tax warrant. Okay. Maybe that's what you're thinking of. That might be what I was thinking. Yeah. There's an alias tax warrant. And, and I use those in other towns that I've been the collector for. And it's small town. Am I doing that? About me? Thank you. <laughs> do you do that? Do you do the tax warrants? We do tax warrants on personal property only. We do not do them on motor vehicles just because of the volume. Because right. we have 47,000 motor vehicle car taxes due in July. At the end of July, we have maybe 7,000 of them that are still delinquent. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Hopkins, did you get your car back? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Walsh, you're right in. Cinda, uh, getting Going to what Mr. Hopkins was saying, I thought I read an article in the Connecticut Post that the city of Bridgeport, and I'm not sure whether it was parking tickets or whatever, but there was a big scandal that happened. I'm surprised it's there, but whatever. Um, where where they were selling the cars, the guy was putting the guy who was appointed by City Hall was selling the cars, mm -hmm. and I think he had been a state marshal for a while, mm -hmm. and he was selling them at an auction to himself, and then selling the cars for personal gain. What was that? Is that was that for tax sales, or is that was that for tickets, or what was that? No, for? Well, that um, New Haven also mm -hmm. had the program where the marshals would have they they hired a company that had a computer system that they scanned license plates. Yep. If they found a car that was delinquent in the town, the marshal had the warrant, his, an alias tax warrant, is a warrant that the tax collector gives to a state marshal or a constable, giving them the power to um, collect in our behalf. Mm -hmm. And their process would be to tow the car and put it into a lot to be held. That person doesn't get their car back until they've paid their taxes and then they have to pay the towing fee and they have to pay the storage fee. A lot of people, cars aren't worth a lot of money and they don't ever redeem them. When you have cities like Bridgeport and New Haven, which have very high mill rates, their taxes can escalate rather quickly. So people abandon their cars. And I believe, and I don't know it for a fact, but my thought process would be that those were cars that were never claimed and that he probably took it upon himself to sell them. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments, concerns on this item? Mrs. LeClaire. Um, how does this compare to what we put into suspension <coughs> in prior years? Uh, last year was a little over 100,000. Okay. I think it was like 123 maybe. So we So we, we've looked at, we've been very aggressive the last couple of years. That, and so now, you know, we've gotten to the point where we're getting to a more current grand list years. We had a lot of more delinquencies over the past few years. So we changed software right before when I came here four years ago. We changed software um, and we also started putting in some different policies and procedures. Those were a little more effective as to helping us decide whether we could find them or whether we couldn't find them. So that's why over the years, the first few years were a little bit higher. These now, we've gotten through a certain amount of backlog and now we're working with more current grand lists. That's great, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion to put this before us? Mr. Brown, do I have a second? Go with Mr. Matola. The item is before us, and it's to here consider and act upon the suspense list for the tax collector to allow her to move these accounts in the total of 97,773.97 uh, to uncollectible. All in favor? Opposed? Abstention? That item is done. Thank you so much.
You're welcome. All right. Um, let's go to item number three on the agenda, which is the Fairfield Ludlow High School Building Committee. We have representatives from the building committee here tonight. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Welcome. I, before I turn it over and ask you to introduce yourselves, um, I do want to comment that um, members of the Board of Education could not be here tonight because they have a simultaneous meeting going on across town, which is one of the reasons we're in this room. We know where we stand. Um, but Dr. Title is there, as well as the Board of Education taking care of their business this evening. And they don't want their absence to reflect uh, poorly on the discussion of these windows. Thank you. Yes. I really would like um, both Dr. Title and First Selectman to be here when we discuss this item. Um, because I will have questions that I would like them to answer. Okay, so um, Dr. Title will not be here tonight. Um, we can hear the presentation and then follow up with him. Um, I think the first selectman should be en route. We're, I'm happy to entertain a motion to move this back so that he can be here. Sorry, gentlemen. Uh, and take up other matters before okay. It's up to the board. I'm okay with discussing it. I just know I will have questions for them. Okay. So why don't we start the discussion, and then we can move forward and decide whether we want to vote on it or push it back. I also think the chair of the Board of Education should be here as well, which I know he's at another meeting, so that's impossible. So I'm questioning how we're going to have a full discussion on this without everyone being here. Okay, so what's the pleasure of the board? Would you like to postpone this to the next meeting? Sure. And bond council. Okay. Is bond council here? We've asked that bond council be here any time we discuss a bonded item. Numerous times. You're absolutely right. And, and we need them, I think, for this. Yep. My, my opinion. Oh. Apparently there's a lot of people. Okay. So, do I have a motion on the floor? Now, in fairness, okay, the issue that they're having as a committee right now is they're asking for bids to be held open, and I don't want to speak for you gentlemen, but you're asking for bids to be held open by contractors awaiting the approval of this item, correct? That is correct. And you're, the extension is running out on that, is that correct? Well, um, first of all, my name is Mark Donald. I'm the chair of the building committee. Hello, uh, Mark. And uh, I'll defer to Mr. Manning on the specifics of that. But uh, currently, the bids are, um, the contract date has passed. So the uh, contractors are keeping their bids open in good faith. Okay. So any extension or delay could, a contractor could drop out. I appreciate that. Mr. Mayor, what's the date of our quarterly meeting? The day of the quarterly meeting is the 19th which is a Tuesday, and then the RTM should be meeting on the 18th. Uh, and then they, for their committee meetings, and on the 25th for their voting meeting. So I'm sure they would, I'm sure, not sure of anything. I, I, I would think they would allow it to be heard in committee pre you guys hearing it. Okay. So, and so we can I mean, do We could work 19th. towards that anyway. Okay. So we can do this on the 19th if... Yeah. Okay. In other words, it wouldn't be a full month. I'm just trying to... How, Wash. how long do you have these bids? The, the original date of the bid. What was the date of the bid? My, my name is Peter Manning at Gilbane Building Company. We took bids, I, I want to say January 3rd or January 4th, right after New Year's. And what are we doing here on May 5th? Being some degree of rush and trying to keep people open, and we're just getting this now. How does it get from early January to May 5th, five months before it gets to our table? So there was a delay of one month of being, because we did not have an April meeting. So that's on us. Okay, okay. that's one month. That's one month. Before that, I can't speak to. Okay, but it is fair to say that that one month delay was your accommodation to us, right, and my request. That's correct, and I, I think um, 
you know, if, if I may, at least we could give a brief overview of the timeline, et cetera, Please. which may answer some of those questions. Please. And, then, you know, we can defer to whatever the, the board chooses uh, after that. Um, so just the high level that will hopefully answer some of these questions um, very quickly is uh, we went out to bed, bid in early January. Um, the bids were completed uh, in late January, if I have it correct, and we actually had um, approved a, a GMP as a committee on January 20th. Um, and then we were wrapping up. Um, so, you know, let me rewind a bit. So we have what, in our jargon, we had three phases to complete based on the funding approved uh, in 2013. Um, phase one we uh, refer to as the roof, uh, which obviously is very straightforward. Phase two is the classroom and cafeteria additions. And then free, phase three is the window. So we started all three processes. Um, as a committee, we were formed in August 2013, and we hired the team in January of 2014. Um, so essentially, all three phases were begun at the same time. And we actually, uh, at the same time we hired the team, we hired the environmental consultant to begin the EPA process. Um, or excuse me, the PCB process, which obviously had to go through EPA, which is a lengthy process. So um, phases one and two, which again are the roof and the classroom and the cafeteria additions were completed in August 2015, which uh, was the biggest driver of the whole project was to make sure that the um, classroom and cafeteria was complete in time for the new high school schedule. Um, and then phase three, we, um, continued to go back and forth with EPA and uh, we finally uh, received approval in December December 10th in December um, to go and that's when the bidding process so that's part of the reason with the disconnect um, with the timing and completion of the three phases um, phases one and two are um, okay but what about the between January through April right so the and GMP I'm taking a hit for May yeah yeah so January 20th again the GMP and um, in conversations with the selectman um, he wanted to uh, have a little more um, finality as we were closing out the bids from phases one and two to get the final cost of that um, as well as some other projects um, unrelated to this and out of our control jumped ahead in the queue um, I may be incorrect, but I know the Holland Hill project is one that has some urgency. And uh, so that back and forth is what pushed it back through the month of February and March. Okay, so it was the first selectman who pushed it back. Yeah, he, he wanted us to, to give him more, um, I guess, fidelity of our phases one and two numbers, yes. Fidelity of the numbers, when you use the word fidelity, Finality, finality, of, of, yeah. finality yeah. of the numbers. It's the wrong F word, my Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so finality of phases one and two. Yes. What does he mean by that? So, uh, well, Peter, do you want to speak to this? So um, we, we basically prepared a GMP, guaranteed maximum price for phases one and two, hired all the contractors to, to um, complete those um, uh, at, at the end of the process, we wanted to make sure all change orders were closed out, all funds were paid. Basically, we were uh, sure of the bottom line of the cost for phase one and two. And I think that's what the first selectman was looking for, to make sure that <coughs> um, there was a, a clear cut delineation of how much phases one and two cost before they moved forward with three. And how long did that take? Um, it, it, it took till about April 6th when we made the presentation to the selectmen. Um, so the work was complete um, at um, September, October, and it, it took uh, a number of months to, to close out the project. So the project, the first two phases were completed in August 2015, and it took that long to get it all closed down? There was still some miscellaneous work that went on after um, uh, the, the occupancy. Um, but yes, the, the, uh, it was somewhere in um, 
February or March that the time frame was uh, the, the projects were closed closed down I think uh, we're gonna have to adjourn this to our the night of the uh, quarterly review yeah because I think there's there's already things being said here that we need the first selectment for that I'm gonna want to see the um, chairman of the Board of Education for that we need bond council for I agree with bond council the first selectman is going to be here I did not know of the conflict with the Board of Education until today in a conversation I had with Dr. Tidal, quite frankly. Right. So um, I think that's my apologies, but I think that's perfectly appropriate. Mr. Flynn, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, if we're not meeting until May 19th mm -hmm. and the RTM has their meeting on May 18th, as I understand. That's their subcommittee meetings. That's their subcommittee meetings. That so they'll meet the fair. following Monday. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Which is why I suggested the quarterly as opposed to, I want to be cognizant of the fact that they have been patient. Um, they did get the approval from the Board of Selectmen. We did postpone this because of all that was going on with the budget mm -hmm. and everything else that was going on. And we wanted some clarity about that before we brought this to the table. That was my call. Okay. On that. Does anybody have anything to say? And I'll, I'll let the gentleman talk. Is that overly problematic for you? If we do that on the 19th, no, I'm, I'm just wondering if, if it's wait, Mr. Mayor, please, if it's worthwhile for us to go through the, the presentation just to give you the overview and then the action can wait or we can go to, you the know, question. you have been very patient for us. I would like to just let him walk through the, the, the thing and then we can come back and you can do. I think that's yeah, but I the, owe you that. Okay. And that's fine. But you might be doing the whole thing again, just just so, just so you know, because if I start hearing personally, if I start hearing some things that I think um, the chairman of the board of education needs to hear, bond council needs to hear, or the first selectman needs to hear, where I'm going to be asking questions to all of you again, we're going to have to step through it all over again. Fair enough. Okay, I'm just trying to be honest and, and about in it. In that, and Mr. Walsh, I think that's very fair. In that, let's try to keep our questions itself tonight to the minimum, in deference to it. Let's walk through the presentation, write down our notes. Then when everybody's here, we can ask questions together. Mr. Mayor, you had a comment. You wanted to yeah, uh, with apologies. Uh, it doesn't change anything other than if everybody shows up uh, for a meeting on the 19th. That's actually Thursday. The meeting is actually the 17th. 17th. Tuesday. Okay. Wait. I'm sorry. Tuesday the 17th. Tuesday the 17th is me. So in other words, you gave me the wrong date a couple of minutes ago. That's yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. But everything else still works the same. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Gentlemen, I'll turn it over to you to walk us through the presentation, Brittany. And thank you. Okay, so uh, I'll kick it off. Um, again, my name is Peter Manning, Gilbane Building Company. We the, are the construction manager for um, the Ludlow project. Um, uh, I'm going to, I had hoped to project this PowerPoint, but um, with no screen, um, if you'll bear with me, we'll just go through the handout. Uh, on page two, the purpose of our presentation is really to provide you with a Brief summary of the Ludlow project status, the costs incurred to date, and ultimately we're seeking to get approval from the Board of Finance to move forward with phase three. On page three, just a quick summary of the project. Um, the project at its initiation was really cut into three phases. Phase one was the roof replacement project at the Ludlow High School, um, and that included about 80% uh, replacement of the roofs. Um, there were some portions of the roof that were relatively new and um, still under warranty, so those roofs were not uh, replaced. Phase two was the classroom and cafeteria additions. Um, the cafeteria addition was um, required to accommodate student population growth and revised classroom schedule, uh, renovate the existing cafeteria in conjunction with the addition, and academic addition to accommodate four classrooms and four labs. Um, and those two additions were separate from each other. One is in the back of the uh, Ludlow School, the cafeteria, and the Classroom additions at three-story addition on the front uh, wing. The, the third phase was the window replacement project.
project. Um, and the identification of PCBs and asbestos in the caulking in the um, existing windows uh, required that the, the program get submitted to EPA for approval. Um, and the phase three was really to establish an abatement plan to remediate and replace those windows with um, more energy efficient windows in the building. Moving on to page four, just a little bit of background information. Approved funding um, was based on a, an estimate that was prepared by Silver Petroselli Architects back in January of 2013. And the approval of the 11630700 was approved by the town in May of 2013. Um, and then the design for the Ludlow project commenced with a different architect, and it should be n noted that Perkins Eastman was the selected architect um, in early 2014. Page five, uh, uh, a little bit of uh, budget history. Um, Based on development of the design of phase one and two and, and the, um, at the, the design development phase of the design, which is prior to bidding, um, it was identified by the project team that all three phases could not be funded for the amount that was uh, approved in um, 2013. Uh, in June of 2014, the school superintendent um, expressed uh, urgency to complete at least the academic wing and the cafeteria addition to meet the demands of uh, uh, additional enrollment and scheduling changes that the school was undergoing. So in June um, 19th of 2014, Mark, the chair of the building committee, the town director of purchasing, Fairfax, Fair, Fairfield Public Schools um, and the first selectman discussed a strategy to deal with the phase three partially with what money was available on the original budget and complete phase one and two complete. Uh, in November of 2014, the Board of Education amended the ed spec um, and really did two things. One, it allowed a single layer roof mem membrane on the roofs, which was um, an effort to save some money on phase one. And then um, also um, amended the ed spec to proceed with phase one and two and complete what parts of phase three could be afforded under the original funding request. Go to page six. This gives a brief schedule um, summary of where we were um, with regard to bidding. Phase one, the roof replacement um, was um, approved by the uh, state in June of 2014, um, was bid once originally in um, right after uh, June was over budget um, significantly? I think you just need to hit the highlights. I don't okay. think you need to read okay. every line on. Okay. Go right ahead, please. Bottom line is phase one and two are complete. Um, and um, occupancy is, is uh, complete and, and they're occupying. Based on EPA issues on phase three, um, we were not allowed to bid phase three until um, December, at which time we put the the uh, package out to bid. The page seven is, a, is basically a summary of the costs of the um, phase one and two. Uh, it, it is um, total construction cost was $9.7 million, adding all of the architect, owner, consultants, professional fees, FF&E, um, and some of the costs of phase three, and I think that's important 
it's some of the design costs for phase three are included in this cost. The total amount um, expended or, or projected at, at this point in time, and, and this number has actually come down a, a little bit, um, was 11371862 which means there is a, a balance of $258,000 left in the um, original budget. Um, the, the next page is the cost, basically a more detail of those numbers I just gave you. We won't go into that. Um, page 9 give, gives some procurement and construction status of phase 3. And um, I think if you just go right to page 11, um, the, the funding request summary um, shows that we're requesting 3.907674 in order to fund the uh, windows complete. Now the difference between phase one and two um, is that the original funding was not based on bid numbers. Phase three, this value is based on bid numbers. So in as much as the contractors will hold their numbers, we are relatively confident this number will stand firm. We have included some higher levels of contingency in the event uh, a contractor decides not to honor their bid and would, you know, potentially walk away. So um, with the available $258,000, the, the grand total re being requested is 3.907 to complete the, the Ludlow windows. So the Ludlow windows, this was an originally about a $11.6 million product, project. Correct. Approved. The Ludlow windows themselves, if I factor in the 4.167, which you're saying is the cost, including the 258, plus the 300,000 that was spent, that comes to close to $4.5 million right. in total to do phase three. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And phase one and two, using that same math, cost $11 million in total. Uh, Eleven million less than three hundred three that was spent in the. Uh, I subtracted that yes. out. Yeah. So yes, you're so right. So it's eleven three seventy one less the three. Correct. Three hundred three. So it's about eleven million one. Correct. Okay. Um, brief comments, questions from board members, and then I do want to make sure I don't. To Mr. Walsh's point, I don't want to redo this again. But does anybody have anything looking at the presentation that they know they're going to want to talk about? be better prepared in a couple weeks. After voting, okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Brown. I'm going to want to talk about this whole project. I mean, we could, I could be here for an hour asking questions. So I think I'm going to try and get some of those answered between now and the next meeting. Now, just for example, I, I don't know where the phases came from. I felt like I voted on a project. There were parts to the project, three parts to a project, but not three phases. We were going to allocate money toward a phase, and then if we ran out, well, then we have to come back to reallocate money to that third phase. I just didn't, I looked at it as one project. So, I have about five questions from there that, that I'll wait on. That's just the beginning. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Walsh. I have similar recollection I don't remember when we were getting this presentation that there was any phasing of this project or any priority of this project in the different phases that were presented I am going to go back to look at the presentation again um, to see whether that was actually uh, referenced um, my recollection though is off the top of my head this started off as a, a window and roof project that's what it was a window and roof project and then the whole classroom stuff came in later on and people making requests on why we needed it. And now all this money is spent and we don't have one of the main reasons why we did the project. We don't have the windows. So um, 
I'm going to have to go back and, and, and look at this. I'm going to see if Fair TV still has this, if it, if it has it online, um, to be able to review it, I guess, before the next meeting. Through you, Mr. Chairman, I would like, at least for myself, if anybody would like to join me, I would like to have a tour of the building to see the work that was done, because I want to compare it against the plans that we originally were presented and figure, I'm trying to figure out where did this go wrong? Because this has got to be one of the biggest cost overruns of any public project that I've seen, other than, I guess, the Metro Center was over, but that was because of environmental reasons that we found out later on. So. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Can we arrange that for a tour of the building before the next meeting? And if we can also get, um, I would like to get, if, if I think the whole body would like to get all the materials from the original presentation, plans, whatever was presented when we first voted on this, if we can have that all again. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. We'll go to Mr. Matola. And I just want to. And then, oh. I just want to add one attachment to what Jim just asked. The RTM specifically added the, um, the budget and attached it to the res bond resolution. So I would like that original bond resolution and the attachment. Mr. Mayor, you're taking all this down, right? Is that, thank you. Mr. Matola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Matola. Yeah, I don't remember if I was on the Board of Ed still or, or in the RTM when this whole thing started. It was originally going to be a window replacement project, but there were issues with it. I, I, to the extent that we can do it, I'd like a, like a historical time frame yeah. with respect to what's happened over the last couple of three or four years. It's been a while. Well, to your point, um, <clears throat> I just don't remember. The discussion of the windows for Ludlow goes back about 10 years. Yeah, I remember doing a ago. tour. The school. Oh, yeah. yeah. When we did the tour of the school with um, uh, the headmaster, Lars, head, headmistress Lars, Mrs. Larson, um, my daughter was about to start high school and she's graduating college. Um, yeah. just for and, I, and, I, and I also just, you know, I think it's to be fair to everybody, I, I think these, I think originally it was a window project and then the town and the Board of Ed had some other needs and it developed into something more than a window project. So You're exactly right. So so it's Well we had the we had the window project, then they knew that the, the roof was starting to fail. Right. They had the problem with the roof. Right. And then they decided that they had the um, capacity problem. Right. So you're exactly right. It morphed over a period of years. Right. And yeah. I, and I'm we're not being critical of you guys. I thank you for all your hard work. Um, just um, I just don't remember. I'm getting old. <laughs> so I'd like to see that. The I think what this goes to is a process question because um, we did a number of years ago, and I think it's absolutely correct to ask for some of that information, approve something for $11 million. And we thought we were getting three items. We ended up getting two items for the same $11 million, and then coming back for a request to say, you know, what did we really buy? So I think it's, it's appropriate to go back and say, how, where did this happen? What happened here? How is this different? This is what clear to your comment. How is this different from what we thought we were buying? I think that's all very relevant. No, no. It's, it's, a history of this would be uh, beneficial also so we can learn something from it for future projects. Absolutely. And, and that's really why I need bond counsel here. I, I have some questions on what Mr. Flynn just said about the whole process. And again, nothing to do with the building committee, just the process in general. But we could tie it specifically to this, to this project. Great. All right. So do I have a motion? Mr. Walsh? Make a motion to adjourn the, this matter um, until our quarterly meeting, the night of our quarterly meeting. I also specifically make a request that on that evening, bond council be present, the first selectman be present, the chairman of the board of education be present, uh, obviously, you two gentlemen be present. Uh, Doc, and a doctor title be present. That would be May 17th, if I can just add to that. Yeah. And if they're not available, I think we're going to have to consider moving it again. Do we have a second to that motion? I'll take Mrs. LeClaire on this. Okay, any discussion, question, comments, concerns, gentlemen? All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? That item's moved. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you, Thank you for the time. My apologies for the inconvenience because the others could not be here this evening. All right, I'm going to entertain a motion now to move the mill rate discussion up. We had moved it to item number six.
We make a motion to move this to item number three right now. Mr. Matola? Yeah. Do we have a second? second? Mr. Brown? All in favor of moving this up in the agenda? Opposed? Abstentions? We're moving it up. So before us now is to consider and set the mill rate for the fiscal year beginning July uh, 1st, 2016 and ending June 30th, 2017. Um, annually, Mr. Mayor puts together schedules uh, for our discussion of the mill rate. He's done that again now. I would ask that he, um, he uh, walk us through those schedules and we can move from there. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, if you go to the third page of the handout, Schedule A, um, we have uh, the approved RTM expenditure budget $293 million, uh, estimated fees, services, and other $13 million, $14 million. Uh, this is the budget that was passed by the Board of Finance. It, it has two uh, somewhat minor changes. We have uh, updated information on the um, EAA adjustments. Uh, and we have, uh, there's been a change in the collection rate, improvement in the correction, uh, an increase in the collection rate. But uh, so the state revenue of $9,299,000 assumes uh, the revenue that was anticipated at the time that this board passed the original budget. Uh, prior tax, interest, liens and fees, etc. So it comes down to a net current year revenue required uh, from taxes of $267 million. Um, and we have the credits uh, reserves. I think we all know what most of those are. The uh, reserve fund collected there is at 98.71. The uh, budget that you passed was at 98.61. So that's been increased by 10 basis points, uh, which has an impact of about $270,000. Um, and you have the mill rate. The original bill rate was two, uh, 25 point 43, 45. The mill rate with those two changes, 25.43. So Mr. Mayor, going on to the next page. The mill rate the night we set the budget, we believe the mill rate to be the 2545. Five. Is that a correct That is a correct statement, sir. Okay. I just want to give clarity. Uh, okay. No, I appreciate that. And the mill rate, based on better available information related to the collection rate and the change in the, the basis, the mill rate would actually come down to uh, 0.2543 versus 0.2545. Correct. What's the differential in those numbers, dollar-wise? Um, $212,000. Okay. Thank you very much for that clarification. Okay. Go right ahead. And go to Schedule C. Okay, so this Schedule B is just a ton of numbers that we just went over the overview of, which I don't think we're going to detail. I think you just hit the highlights. Um, you go to Schedule C which has uh, in the box at the top of the page the mill rate of 25.43 or decimal 02543, which everyone looking at. That's a mill rate change from the prior year of 2.58%. Um, that's what the reserve fund collected, as I mentioned, is at 3 million five approximately, and it collected uh, as a percent of 98.71. Impact on the medium homeowner of 20, 223 thousand a thousand right two hundred and twenty three dollars if you if you look below you see the collection rate history uh, note that prior to a couple of years ago the uh, the town included uh, overpayments in the collection rate so the numbers weren't accurate but the numbers are are accurate uh, starting in fiscal year 14 that's why I haven't gone back further and you can see that the uh, the actual in 14 was 98.72. The actual in 15 uh, is 98.61. The budgeted that was for 15. The budgeted for 16 was 98.71. And uh, as of uh, my latest evaluation of numbers, uh, 98.77. 
Uh, this is my forecast for this full year. Any questions, Mr. Mayor? Seeing none, continue, please. Uh, next page is D. Basically, the uh, shows the uh, just kind of repeats. You see in the first column, got the assessed value. The A, the $497,000 is the uh, medium home. 674000 is appraised value is the average home. Uh, then you have the assessed value, the, the mill rate. Uh, why is it no rate 2479 instead of 2483? Oh, excuse me. I was, that's uh, this got, year. Got, yeah, that's right. Going to this year. And you got the tax. Thank you. I got a little confused there. Looking at numbers that I think should be different. Uh, so you got the 274, the 2543. Got the new tax levy for the homes of, of these appraised values. And then it shows the tax levy increase, as I mentioned earlier, the 223000 on the medium home. It's $223 on the medium home, $302 on the average home. To flip the page to Schedule E, you see that there's four items uh, in the budget that uh, everything else appears pretty solid uh, to the best of our knowledge and given the information that we have at this date. Uh, the uh, the latest state budget uh, has us losing two million two hundred and ninety eight thousand um, dollars. We've discussed the motor vehicle adjustment number, and as we have two thousand and nine, we have forty eight thousand vehicles on our grand list. Uh, two thousand and ninety three of those vehicles have addresses. Uh, owners and garage both not being Fairfield addresses. Uh, the total grand list amount and the tax adjustment amount, if they were, if none of them are ours, would be $417,000. Um, other towns have the same problem. When they fix this problem, I'm anticipating that all the 417 will, will disappear, but that we will get an offsetting amount with transfers in from other towns, but I have no way. I've, I've talked with the Motor Vehicle Department. I've talked with the President of the Assessors Association. Uh, I've had, but there's just nobody. I've, I've talked with the software developers, the people who wrote the programs, see if we could get accelerate this information. And there's just, but there's, you know, they keep, you know, I'm hoping to have it this month, but who knows. So essentially the, the 417 is worst case scenario we lose Total all of these amounts and get nothing and get nothing back which correct. we know is not going to happen correct other areas are having the same totally problem. correct okay and these oh, okay go right ahead sorry okay then we have the assessment appeals there's hundred and thirty thousand uh dollars in, in the uh, budget for uh, adjustment for uh, court assessment uh results for the year um looking at um the um, number of cases that were filed, denied, and approved through the uh, Bureau, uh, Bureau, the, uh, the Assessment Appeals, the, not Bureau, what is it? the BA, Board, Board, Board Assessment Appeals. And currently, they have, people have until May uh, 30th to file to the courts. The filings to date total $56 million of assessed value. Um, if you assume that 10% uh, adjustment, which would be high, but I'm just picking a number, that would be about $142,000. Um, but you only the ma you have a maximum number of 100 cases that you're going to go through in a year. Um, so I'm not anticipating, but I think $200,000 is a better number than $130,000, just based upon the activity uh, here to date. Uh, the senior tax relief. Uh, was originally budgeted uh, based upon the two uh, fiscal year 2016 budget. Uh, this has been adjusted to the 2016 actual, uh, which shows an improvement of $334,000. Uh, so with respect to numbers two, three, and four, uh, at, at worst, I figured they would balance each other out. So what I've provided, uh, and the next schedule is, is a, uh, 
a reconciliation of the uh, approved budget uh, it's column B, eight million two. The General Assembly budget as of yesterday, five million nine. That's the two million two ninety eight. And then the next page has uh, that would, if the board were to adjust that revenue in the budget, the mill rate would go from uh, the two twenty five point forty three to twenty five point sixty four. Uh, for mill rate change, it would go from the 2.58 to 3.43. Um, have a tax collected taxes, um, a tax rate collection rate of 98.73, because the way that falls down in the grid. Uh, so the medium impact on the homeowners is 200, the medium homeowner is $293 versus the current is $223 or a difference of $73 uh, per home. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Questions, comments? Anyone? Mr. Tetra, do you have anything you'd like to say? I know you, we held on this item for you to come, so. One, thank you for holding on this, and I do apologize to the board. The Holocaust commemoration ceremony was tonight. That's a very important community event honoring or remembering, in fact, the six million uh, Jews that died in the Holocaust and countless others of uh, various uh, deals under the uh, Nazi Germany regime. And this is an annual event that we hold at this, so I apologize for being late for that. I Normally, it doesn't you... conflict with board meetings of this board, yeah. so. Uh, you were where you needed to be. No reason to apologize for that. Thank you. So go ahead. Um, I think as we, as we look at this, uh, and I know there's been a lot of talk about this, but I think it, uh, it makes sense to look at a few things. The Board of Finance, as you well know, has a responsibility for a balanced budget and for fully funding the appropriation. I think the circumstance we're in this year is a little bit unique both because of what's taking place at the state level, but also because of the statement that the RTM made uh, just Monday night in terms of, uh, in fairly short order, uh, the RTM approved the entire appropriation uh, that was approved by this board uh, unanimously. And that's not something that happens very often these days, but also enthusiastically stating their support that that is the money that this town needs and that's the money that should be funded to run this town. As you're setting the mill rate, uh, you have an opportunity to honor that request uh, and still keep our overall tax increase to one of the, the lowest in the past 20 years. I think that we've worked hard and the department heads have worked hard uh, to put, put together a budget that um, really allows uh, for that adjustment. Uh, it's, and given the work they did and given what the RTM asked, uh, to not fund that would be in effect cutting the budget, not honoring what the RTM uh, came together uh, and asked us to do. The state aid is currently uh, proposed at a cut of $2.3 million and that's in the agreed upon final version uh, of the budget. There's obviously uh, some more presentations that have to be made on that and a vote on that will um, take place in the near future. So I would ask that you consider either using the latest available information and looking at that 2.3 million. If you're concerned about that, then I think the wisest course of action uh, might be to postpone, consider postponing your vote on the mill rate till we have that information so that you can make a fully informed decision at that point. I think that's um, in keeping with what this board has asked for in the past in terms of having all the information before you before you make a decision. Uh, I think that it will most likely be a couple weeks before we have all that so that fits in keeping uh, with what you're doing and shouldn't impact uh, the tax bills or the generation at that point. 
So I'd ask you as you go through your deliberations to consider uh, either using the latest available information and, that, and accommodating that 2.3 million uh, adjustment or uh, postponing this so that you have all that information. Thank you, Mr. Tetra. I'm going to go to Mr. Walsh and then to Mr. Matoll. Mr. Tetra, are you asking us to raise taxes? Is that what you're asking this board to do? I'm asking you to honor what the RTM said. That the RTM there, is, there is no taxes, tax rate or tax until you vote tonight or vote whenever you vote. But compared to what we had voted on, our board and what the, what the mill rate would have been, you're asking us to raise taxes. You're asking us to, this, and it's still a very big potential since we don't know what the legislature is going to do. We don't know when they're going to vote on it. We don't know where this is going at all. You're asking us to raise taxes to cover this potential. I'm asking you to consider making a relatively small adjustment that kill, still keeps the tax increase to the lowest it's been in 20 years. The tax increase? Yes. The tax increase, this 2.6% increase? No, I believe that includes the adjustment on the grand list also. That you're I know, to. but that's what the real effect is to the taxpayer, isn't it? Uh, actually, when you look at it, a uh, number of taxpayers will actually pay less this year. Many will be do. paying more than that, too. Actually, it's about 50-50. Yeah, so yeah. even half the people are going to pay more than this 2.6%. Yeah. There's no question of revalue. It's hard to pick out just the tax increase, but that's why I looked at the budget increase as the best indicator of that. Yeah. I mean, 2.6% is a lot 50-50 balance. That's a bit right in the middle. Half the people paying more, yes, some people paying less, but it's, it's still a lot to ask, I, I believe. And I think it's a lot to ask in this economy that we're asking our taxpayers to pay 2.6% higher on average. Um, and I don't think that's the lowest. That number is the lowest. No, that number is not. No, it's not. So I don't think it's even close to being the lowest. And revals happen every five years, is it? Thereabouts. Um, so it just it happens when it happens. I mean, we have to deal with it. Um, but that's the effect on the taxpayer. And a correction there. That that's uh, the tax increase is really the budget increase. It's not the mill rate change. To take an an exaggerated example, if the if the if as a result of reval, the everybody's home was reduced, you know, was cut in value by 50% or increased by 50%. The mill rate would change, but the taxes paid would not change. The actual tax rate increase is more aligned with the budget increase, not the mill rate change. I think in that tax increase, or in the mill rate change, I think it's one point seven or one point eight percent is from the I understand from the valuation. I understand the one point nine. Yeah, I understand the point, Mr. Mayor. It's valid. Yeah, I'm just but the reality is to the person getting their tax bill, the individual, you know, they're gonna think if they just listen to us tonight that they're gonna get a tax increase of minimal percent, right? Under one percent based on the spending increase of under 1%. Correct. Right? But a lot of our residents are going to open their tax bills and their tax increase is going to be triple that amount because of the change in their valuation. I don't know if a lot would be... A you said 50%. You said right. 50%. That's a lot. 50% is a lot. Well, you said triple. Well, they're, because they think they're going to get 1%, they're actually going to get 2.6%, 2.7%. Right, but I don't know if that's... That's a change in the mill rate, but not trip. a change in the taxes, though. It's a change in the mill rate. But their amount's going to go up. By how, what percentage not is it going to The average house, the, the, at the, at the average home, the taxes of the average home will go up 0.68%. Uh, right, but to the extent... There's going to be some taxpayers... That will go up more, and some that will go up less. Two and a half, three percent, and some are going to go down. Yes. Right. That, I mean, that's the point. I mean, that, I, I understand what you're saying, but we're still going to get the phone calls from the people that say, 
my taxes went up 3%, 5%, right? And we're going to have to go through that entire explanation that you just laid out, right? Which they're not going to care about. Which they're not going to care about, but, I mean, right? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's, you're, in the, you're in the case that literally each of the boards is, except perhaps the RTM in, in going through this. Certainly your board, the board of selectmen, right. and myself, when I'm putting together the budget, you're weighing off that against what the uh, cuts in services would be. I get it. By making that change, you assure that the Board of Ed doesn't get cut and the town services don't get cut. I'm just applying it to context. Yep. We I spent, understand. We spent a lot of time building a solid financial foundation so we could have this discussion. Yep. Mr. Matola. Okay, so if I'm understanding this, this budget is, and I guess Mr. Mayor can answer the question, this, this budget is built on the assumption that we're going to get our full funding from the state of Connecticut. Is that a fair statement? That what, what the RTM passed? Right, that's what I said, correct. Sir. Okay, and you know, anyone sitting and paying attention over the last three weeks to the month knows that that's certainly not going to happen. Um, and you know, I'm going to have great difficulty um, voting on this tonight before I know what we're going to get from the state of Connecticut, and we should have that information for next week. So I'm, I'm at some point tonight, I'm going to make a motion to postpone this. Um, I think it's clear to me under state law and state statute that the RTM appropriated by its vote the spending package and that we have a legal obligation to fund it fully uh, under state statute. Um, regardless of what we get from the state of Connecticut. That's what the RTM did. Um, so I think we're going to have to do that. And I have a genuine concern that we'd be violating the law if, in fact, we don't do that. And secondly, if we don't fully fund it, we're going to have a big hole in our budget, um, which essentially to me is a, is a cut to the Board of Education budget and it's a cut to the town budget. And that is very concerning to me. My, my understanding right now in, is that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Mayor, that it's about $2.3 million, the, based on what we know today, a $2.3 million cut to Fairfield, give or take. Yeah, that's the schedule, uh, schedule E1 in, in the document. And I understand that that could change. And, I, and my understanding of our legal obligation is that we need to uh, vote based on the most reasonable information that we have. And it certainly is unreasonable to vote on this tonight with an assumption that we're going to get our full funding from the state of Connecticut of $9 million plus dollars. We know we're not going to get that. So um, what, what is the... If we wanted to fund the $2.3 million, let's assume that's the number, and I know that could change. Um, and I'm as frustrated as anybody about this. Don't, don't get me wrong, because this has been going on for a while. But if, if we wanted to fund that $2.3 million, can someone tell me what that would cost? What would the, the average cost be to the... I think that's what he did in the last pages. Yeah, what, where John. is that again? He just that's in the very out. last two pages. So what is that again? It'd have to go up to 25.64, correct, Mr. Mayor? That is correct. Should go up to two on the on the median on the uh, median. You'd go up 296 dollars. No, it'd go up 296. Did yeah, I say that the wrong yeah, way? The, the difference is 296 minus 223. Correct. I wasn't trying yeah. to. Right. It's like a 75 dollars, 73 dollar difference. So it's 73 dollar difference per. Per average house. Right, and I understand that. So, I mean, the way I look at it, and, and I understand these are hard issues, it's $73 for the average taxpayer, and we would be fully funding this budget that I think we're legally obligated to fund based on state law. I'm, I, I have a real concern about going forward on this tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Matola. Mr. Becker. Oh, a few things. So. If we were to do that, it's seventy-three dollars that's then caked in, that is there forever, right? So next year we increase it, but we increase it based upon the new base that has that. 
So I, I always love when people, you know, break the budget down and say this only costs ten dollars. Let's go for it and all of those metrics. But once it's in the budget, the budgets don't go down. They they always go up. So the exception of the town budget this year. You meant overall the budget, but go ahead. The overall taxes. It'd be hard pressed to find, even in your the twenty year lowest, to find a situation where taxes went down, where people actually saw that everybody in town because of the no rate adjustment. Yeah, just right. one, sorry, didn't so, mean to interrupt, just wanted to clarify that one point. Sure. And and, and I and I give you credit and I think the boards for the work that was done on, on the town side of the budget and that brings me to the next point. Within the Board of Education budget and the town budget, however, even with the reduction on the town budget, there are some things, things that are, I think, sacred to a lot of people, but they are new things. They are things that are not there today that would be there next next year under this program. And I think we all said, let's 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 go for it because we could still do this with a low increase and, and, and all that. On my end, those would be the first places that that or, you know the town would have to look to, to go for it. But I still think that at a minimum, we're still looking at the town running the way it is right now. And I think the town's running really well right now from a, you know, what we had from a funding standpoint. Maybe it's not as desirable. There's lots of things that, that you know, that people want. But I have a difficult time, and I, and I understand your, your points about the numbers. Um, I, I personally have a very difficult time simply taking that and rolling it up into the mill rate and saying, you know, hey, Hartford can't pay for it, so now we have to pay for it. Because that's exactly what's going on here. There was a decision, it, it was to hit wealthy towns that there was an assumption would simply roll it up in their mill rate and, and move on. And that they would say it's 73 bucks, it's not a big deal, because everyone can go and pay for it. And, but, but it doesn't, because it gets caked in the budget, it's 73 bucks forever, and next year they come back and they start, and they're just going to keep stripping the stuff down while mandating things on the back end of it all. And, and I just, I've, I personally have a really difficult time with that. And I, and I think that if I, if I thought, my view, if I thought that things that were in the budget right now would absolutely have, you know, currently would have to get stripped out and there would be total damage everywhere because of it, I, I, maybe, my, you know, I feel like my, you know, my back was against the wall on this, but I really think that it's clear. We, we, for all these meetings that we had, we saw things all across the budget that were being done because of savings in one place, because it was a lower, you know, increase year as a whole. And we talked about this as, you know, one town, not just, you know, BOE yeah. or, or, or the town side siloed. Yeah. And, and on my end, I think, you know, I think that we, we need to we need to go to those first and I mean, if, if, if the mill rate doesn't go up and I think that we'll be okay as a town and I think we will be in a better position quite frankly as a town to not simply pass it off to the next layer and, and just make that our practice. Yeah. Thank you Mr. Becker. Yeah. Mr. Chair, if I just correct yeah. that because on, on the town side we did not add things in across the board this year. We we had some expenses go down and we took those to the bottom line. Okay. I'm not let's not get there were some increases guys. in paving as an example. I mean we're not talk I mean we're talking again things that are long standing plans, things I'm just saying that you would the yeah, number we passed, would, it would simply be the same the following year. That's that's my that's Yeah, my we don't need to I don't mean you had it things right I mean that's not what I'm okay. that's not what I'm saying. Go to Mr. Walsh. Yeah. And we'll go to Mrs. LeClaire. I have no idea what the legislature is going to do because I've never seen such insanity as I've seen this year up in Hartford. Started with the Appropriations Committee. They started it trying to make up this $900,000 and our own representative 900 million. 990 million and our own representative Kristen McCarthy Bay is on that. Well, point of order, Mr. Chair. 1.2 Point of order, Mr. Chair. She voted for the uh, print uh, Partnership 2.0 that saved this town 3.5 million this year. So if we're going to call people out, let's be a little careful about that. Just wait and that wasn't supported by the call. other members of our state delegation. So I take offense, and it is a point of order. We should not be discussing individual votes in this, especially if we're going to make them partisan. We're stating he's stating facts. 
Well, it's just you would not full not disclosure, and then I, that's fine. When he's done, get, I want to point course. out the other side of that. Have Thank I ever you. not let you? Have I ever not let you? Just let him finish, and you can absolutely. And in fact, I think you just did. And it's, I'll be happy to repeat it. Go ahead, Mr. Walsh. Voted for a one point million two million dollar cut in the ECS funding that comes to this town, and then the governor increased it. The governor increases it to $3.5 million. And, and it's the, the most interesting calculation. I don't even know how it works because we're trying to solve a town, I mean, a state deficit of almost a billion dollars. And I would have thought they would have said if you wanted to hit the ECS money and say we need some savings there of $54 million, wherever the number is, that you would have said how much, how, how, how are we going to save that amount of money? in that bucket. Well, we'll figure out what that amount of money is as a percentage of the total amount. And everybody would take an equal hit based on how much you were getting the previous year. But unbeknownst to me, that's not how that works. Somehow there's some calculation where Fairfield goes from getting $3.5 million to getting zero but cities like Bridgeport go from go and get an extra $25 million or Hartford $30 million. They get more money in this, in this process. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Again, I'm going to raise the I mean, it's, on the it's, same thing. This is just, we're getting very, very far afield here. We're here to discuss what the mill rate we're going to discuss, not what Hartford did or might do. I mean, I understand what but you said I think before about facts, but they have to be relevant facts. What the procedure was in Hartford is, is just not what we need to discuss here. That's for it them. It is if we're going to entertain a motion to delay the vote based on what Hartford's doing. And we, none of us can figure out what Hartford's doing. Well, I don't think we need the historical background. Mr. Walsh, do you know going on very, very extensively. It, I, I know you don't like the conversation, but it's just, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a logical conversation about where we are. I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, there's a proposal by the Republicans up, in, up there that would cut nothing from our, from, from, our uh, the town ECS money. Nothing. It wouldn't affect municipal aid at all. No, that's not correct. It wouldn't affect the ECS money, would it, Mike? Do you uh, support that? that, that do you support the Republicans I, in that? I don't believe that their proposal is balanced or could work because they have uh, assumptions in there on the revenue side and on cost cutting side that they cannot deliver on a timely basis and have not been discussed with the workplace. They weren't going to cut the ECS money. I mean, I if, you're, if you're making numbers up, you can I do a lot. I think in balancing this budget, I think they're all doing that. <laughs> to cut I, education. I, I would money. not argue very long with you on that. <laughs> I think to cut education money in balancing this budget is 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 horrible, to be quite honest with you. Especially with the amount of money that this town sends up to Hartford and the amount that we get back, I think it's horrible. But I don't know what they're going to do. And they keep, they've delayed their vote. It's supposed to be yesterday. They're obviously having problems. I have to go with the information that I have now. And that's what I'm prepared to go with. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. This is LeClaire. Mr. Flynn, I thought you were going to give me a chance to respond. Oh, okay. I will. All right. I thought you already did, but no. go right ahead. Well, one, I think it's uh, as a point of order, I think, to uh, bring another uh, elected official into this without them being here. If you want to know what they voted or how they voted or the background on it, and certainly looking at a vote, that doesn't look like. Second, it's difficult for me to believe uh, with any credibility that Mr. Walsh is that upset at that when he personally has made motions before this board to uh, cut millions of dollars off the Board of Ed budgets over time. Millions of dollars. Uh, more in, in some of his motions than in any one motion being considered up in Hartford right now. So I think that, that More that's, than 3.5 million? Uh, I'd have to go back and add them up all in one oh, session. So over I'd a number to, of years, not in one time. No, in one budget session. I, I know this made more than that, but I will have to, I have to go back and add them up to get an exact amount. But certainly over well, two million. Maybe you should do that before you say that. Well, okay. certainly over two million, okay. Mr. Flynn. Certainly over two million. No, I've never made one over two million, Mike. So you can apologize to me on the record at the next meeting. Uh, you've made two million and other motions after two that. Million. You made a two million motion and after yeah. that failed a one million motion. So that's three million dollars in total. Wait, two million and then going down to one million? Well, in motions. Can you add them <laughs> oh, together? Come on, Mike. Seriously. Yep. Seriously. And that's a direct cut to education. It is a direct cut. 
And they, 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 the only difference case, is, is I'm talking about Fairfield dollars and we're managing our budget. Yeah. When you're bringing in 6.4% tax increases. I haven't ever brought in a 6.4%. Oh, you, you, you proposed one. Right. You Five, proposed a and, and tax and increase of 6.4%. Right. And, and we knew, Jim, everybody knew that was out to bid. That was in Board of Ed Healthcare and you knew what that was. And no, bringing that up not. again is not credible. Guys, we did. we're done. Mr. Flynn, I was still trying to respond. You were yelling. I was not yelling. Yeah, you were. If you want to hear me yell, I'll do that. But I was not yelling, and he was interrupting me, and I had the floor. Go right ahead, Mr. Tetra. Thank you. Thank you. Still think as a point of order, we should not discuss other elected officials. If you have a question on why they voted on something state level, we should bring them in to do that. Uh, I don't think you, know. you questioned. I think you stated a fact. Uh, in terms of I'm not going to defend the state budget process up there this year or frankly any other year I think they've got a lot of work up there to do it's certainly nowhere near as transparent or bipartisan as the budget process we use here in Fairfield and that above all things has been very disappointing to learn the more I learn about it the more I'm disappointed in that should be I think we all are Mrs. LeClaire okay. and I'm gonna take what Mr. Tetro just said and lead into what I was about to say and that is um, I feel what's happening at the state has been quite arbitrary. It's they can't make a tough decision and live within their means. So they are, in fact, passing the tax down to us. And um, when we start our budget process, you lead us kindly through the budget book, and we know where your proposed mill rate is right from the start. And we're looking at that number, and as we hear each department and look at, listen to each budget, we're thinking about how, how much we can increase taxes in one given year. And that is always in our, the Board of Finance's minds as we he, go through the budget process. And so when we approve the budget, we approved it trying to reach a specific goal and try to keep that mill rate within reason. And so because we don't know what the state is about to do and how much they're going to cut, and we know where we want to end up, I think we still have to approve the mill rate as we planned, and then we're going to have to make tough decisions as the year goes on, and Mr. Tetro is going to have to lead us through that. Um, but I think we need to approve the mill rate as we planned. If, if I might add on to that just briefly, what CCM is working on and what we're pushing for as part of the CCM group is that the state would decide the municipal aid package up front even though they might work on the rest of the budget later to kind of help with the timing on that. I think that's an excellent idea and I can't believe that hasn't been done years past. Um, I'd like to run through a couple things here if I might. May Mr. I Mayor, I'm going to need your help. Before you do that? Uh, you want to make a point? Okay, I want to go, but go ahead. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I mean, I just, it sounded like you were putting us to a vote. I didn't no, want to go that no, far. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'll wait for you then. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no, I definitely wasn't. I'd like okay. to know I was going to do that. Thanks. Um, all right. Can we turn to page um, Schedule E? Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, once again, I want to thank you uh, for putting together the package on the mill rate adjustment. I appreciate it. Um, being an accountant, I like to go to the numbers. So we start out at about 2.45, right? Which is the adjustment if all this stuff were to go wrong, right? If the 2.3 adjustment comes down from the state, if the motor vehicle adjustment, we get no uh, offset, the assessment appeals, it's where it is, and senior citizen tax relief, right? Okay. Just, just go with me here. Yeah, but I, didn't, I didn't hear the, the intro of what you said. Okay. If all this stuff works out, we've got to, you estimate that the hit to the budget, if all this stuff were to go badly for us, the hit to the budget on the revenue set is about $2.45 million. Yes, yes, sir. I'm with you. Okay. We know, and you said, stated yourself, that the motor vehicle adjustment is overstated here. Correct. Because it's a gross amount, not a net amount. And it's reasonable to assume that the net amount will be much, much less than that. Correct statement? I hope so, and I think so. All right. Let's say, and by the way, I agree. I don't know what the, the city, the state's going to do. It's screwed up. I'm, I'm sorry, we, we don't know. It's been all over the lot, quite frankly. 
If, the, if it was going to be the 2.3 or if we could guarantee it, they would have voted last night. They didn't. Okay. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. All right? If I look at this 2.4, I think the number is closer to 2.1. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you've already said that in the last five, six weeks since we've done this, we've already picked up about $200,000 in collection. Right? Net number, collections versus what was offset, right? Yeah, the the, um, the assessment appeal adjustment had a 200,000 negative. The collection rate changed 400,000 positive for right. net 200,000 right. positive. Right, and then you've got another 70 in here for lawsuits for assessment appeals, correct? Correct. Okay, so if we say the cut coming off this page is a grand total of 2.1 million, right? Now, if we were to approve the mill rate that we thought we were going to approve six weeks ago, five weeks ago, whatever that number is, right, that's an extra $200,000, correct? So then the adjustment is down to $1.9 million. Fair statement, Mr. Mayor? I understand what you're doing, yes. Okay. So then we're looking at a $1.9 million adjustment on a budget of, what is it, 290 some odd million, correct? Correct. Okay. Very small percentage on that basis. Yeah. Now. 293 to be exact. 293. And we're looking at 1.9 million. Right? Now, I heard us talking about estimates earlier. I've been doing budgets for 25 years, both in business and, and publicly like this. All budgets are based on estimates. We estimate the collection rate. We estimate the motor vehicles. We estimate insurance. We estimate OPEB. We estimate snowstorms. The entire budget is based on estimates, both the revenue and expense side. That's what a budget is by definition. Let's look at a few of the other estimates. So we're looking at a $1.9 million problem. Ah, on the insurance side, Mr. Mayor, I'm not saying we would take this all or that it's going to hold up. But if you were to add together the Board of Ed and the town side insurance experience, where we're going into next year, right now. What's that number that we're over? Are you saying what is... Um, based on the experience... Based, based on what's funded... Um, you know the schedule we do all the time. Yeah, right. The, 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 uh, the internal service fund schedule. Correct. Right. Um, Board of Ed is over about $1 million right now, right? Board of Ed is over. The Board of Ed should give back to the town $1,050,000 if all goes as currently known. And what's it? Right. Big if. A couple months left in the air. What's the town side? The town side, I look at differently because the town side, I meld it all together and that's still a negative number. So I don't really measure that number. Wow, so but you have, it on the, you have it on the health insurance side. Yeah, but I don't, I, I haven't. All right. I, yeah, so you don't have it. I don't. I'm going to take that, I'm going to take that million dollars from the board of that, right? And I'm going to say that number, I'm going to leave some cushion in there in case we have bad experience, okay? I'm going to leave the same cushion that I personally advocated be put in last month, just 250000 Correct. So I'm going to say, you now get a $1.9 million cut, less 750000 Fair? 1.15. 1.15 million. That's a $1.15 million cut on a $293 million budget, right? 0.3%. Excuse me? 0.3% more or less. 0.3%. Now, I was at the same RTM meeting that Mr. Tetra was at when they voted on this. And he's absolutely right in that what they voted on in terms of appropriations. What he didn't say was the statements that were actually made when the RTM approved that budget. And Mr. Hurley got up and spoke about approving that budget, but saying we expect that any shortfall to be managed jointly between the town and the Board of Education. That's because we do not want to raise taxes. Ah. We want it managed, and those expenses managed to come in with that. That's, I was there as well. That's a correct statement. Right. So that's what he said. So the real intent, at least of and he was speaking for the majority, was we're going to pass this budget because we think it was put together well. Nice job. 
We agree with the estimates. We agree that everything was done. We also know we got this problem in Hartford. And we expect this problem in Hartford to be managed through expense control, not through raising taxes. They were very clear on that before they voted. Right? Yes. Okay. So now we're looking at a $1.15 million problem, if that's what this is. Right? I had a conversation with Dr. Title today, um, which is, by the way, how I found out the first time I found out that they couldn't be here tonight because of the other Board of Education meeting. And in that conversation, which was about this, um, and I didn't go into the 1 million at the point we were talking about 2.3 million. Let me be clear. Because um, it's a, a number that could be a cut. Um, and he said, and I want to be very clear, and I asked him if I could quote him tonight, and he said I could. He said, you know, I stand behind the budget. I think it's a strong budget. I think it's a right budget. I was, he was very appreciative that the Board of Education supported his budget that the Board of Selectmen worked on his budget, that the Board of Finance approved his budget, and that the RTM passed it. He also was very clear that he was very frustrated by what was going on at the state level. He could not understand and could not believe that they had cut the ECS, and he had never seen that before. Uh, he also said um, that he felt very badly for the taxpayers of Fairfield, and he understood that they had a problem um, with all these funds. And I said, you know, what is a cut? Let's take the 2.3, 2.5 million dollars. You're going to get a percentage of that. What that percentage is, who knows? But you're going to get a percentage of it. And he said, yes. He said, I think the town should get a percentage, and I think we'll take a percentage. And he goes, I want to be clear. You know, I'm not asking for a percentage, is what he said. You know, I would rather we don't do it. Uh, and he fully supports his budget. But he said, you know, Tom, if we have to take a cut here of some size below that, it's not going to affect program. We can find that money. We can find that money, is what he said. He said, I'm not going to be happy to find it. Will we have to do some different things? Yeah, we will. But we can find the money to not harm the program. The one caveat he said is, I would like, and this is him, I would like to work with my senior administrators to find that. I would like to prioritize where that is. You guys tell us what the number is, and we'll, we'll work with it. And he was very clear he would like his insurance number to be part of that number. He said, I think that would only be fair, because it was done in the past years, that we benefit from the insurance number and not be used as an offset to our cut. And that's what he said. I, I put that out there for full disclosure because, A, he said I could. And B, because I think that kind of tamps down some of the fear and things that we've been having around town related to that. Um, the other items, right? Permits, conveyance, and investments. We were largely uh, pretty conservative on those in this budget process for revenue side. So there might be offsets there, right? So at the end of the day, we're looking at a million dollars. Million dollars with this budget. I want to send a message to Hartford. The message I want to send to Hartford is we're not just going to take it and put it back in our budget. Because they're a billion dollars off this year, they're scheduled to be five to six billion dollars off next year. I thought it was two, but it's in the billions. Yeah, I had heard five to six. Okay, two. It'll probably uh, be yeah, it'll probably be eight. Mr. Brown's probably right. Whatever it is. We can't be held accountable for that. It's not fair to our taxpayers. It's not fair to anybody in town. Um, that's why I wanted to step you guys through the math, because when I do that, it's palatable. Thank you for listening to my soliloquy for a few minutes. What else? Anybody else have any comments? Mr. Hawkins, please. So, Mr. Flynn, as I understand your um, scenario, um, but that really only covers the portions of the cuts that would have to be undertaken by the Board of Ed. There's, I mean, if you're going to 
have some of it by the Board of Ed and some of it by the town side. There's going to be more cuts on the town side, won't there? Uh, well, there's also revenue adjustments. Well, and by the way, Mr. Mr. Mayor, at the end of each of the last several fiscal years, correct me if I'm wrong, but we've run a surplus. Is that correct? Yes, yes, definitely. And how much was the surplus last year? Three million. Three million. Now, in fairness, yes. some of that surplus last year. Wait, 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 wait. Was it 1.2? No, it's like 3.2. Yeah, that's what I thought. But then yeah, saying but in fairness, all right, and to answer the question, a large chunk of that was the FEMA reimbursement. Right? If you backed up the FEMA reimbursement, it's closer to like a million bucks. Yeah. Well, but what if some of that doesn't come true and we end up making cuts? Mm -hmm. Next year, we're looking at a scenario where we're going to have a lot more serious challenges. And things that get cut this year, it's going to be much, much tougher to put them back in. And I'm looking at trucks in the DPW, which we wanted to try to keep on, um, on the uh, regular budget. And now next year, when we have much more serious challenges, if they get cut this year, it's going to be much harder to put them back in next year and get that going. One of the reasons why we did that this year is because we had the opportunity. I think we need to keep going with that opportunity. It is precisely because we don't know what the state government is going to do that I think it's, it's irresponsible to go forward this evening and set a tax mill rate based upon revenues that we expected that we were going to get when we set the original budget. Um, that in fact is just setting ourselves up for a serious failure. Um, I'd like to ask a question of um, the town attorney. And I'd like to ask the town attorney if he knows, is he here? Oh, there he is. He is. while he's getting set up. Um, the question is, well, first of all, isn't it, isn't it true that we have an obligation to fund the budget as it was appropriated by the RTM? Under state statute, okay. the Board of Finance has an obligation to lay a tax that is sufficient to cover the current expenses those expenses are what are the appropriations that were passed by the RTM on Monday. So under state law, you have an obligation to fully fund those appropriations. Is there any, but the, our problem is, is we don't know what funding we're going to get from the state, which means we have to set a mill rate, presuming what it is. Is there any precedent on that subject if, if we don't set it appropriately or if we're wildly off? Well, I think that you have a deficit budget, which is not a proper budget. I think that certainly under the law you can wait to determine to get all the information that you want. There are, I think, some avenues that the town can take if the budget, if you do have a deficit budget that's funded. But again, very simply, you have to set the mill rate to fully fund the budget based on all the income you know, non-tax income that you're going to get. It's very simple, Section 7-344. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have an obligation to set the mill rate based on real figures. I would strongly urge this body to wait. The, there's a very, very strong possibility the legislature may act as early as next week. Waiting one week or even two would not be a disaster for this body. To do otherwise would essentially be to inflict a cut on the spending that we approved just about a month ago, that the RTM approved just last night unanimously. Because Monday night. Correct. And when, if we pass the budget, if we pass a mill rate that presumes money that we don't get, when that money doesn't come in, we're going to end up having to cut programs seriously. Uh, that money will be taken up by education. You know, we have an opportunity this year to, um, I think one of the things that the um, 
the Board of Ed was doing was they were trying to reconfigure their math program so they had new math textbooks they wanted to buy. That might be off the table. Um, I know that they wanted to try to extend foreign languages to children in the third grade, which would be extremely smart thing to do because that's when children are better able to learn languages. These are just great opportunities and things that we had a great opportunity to do. And I know when we first found out some of the great things that were happening with the budget, everybody wanted to have a 0% tax increase this year. And it's not our fault, but we just have to fund this budget as is. And I would strongly urge us to wait until maybe next week or a week or two so that we can do this appropriately, legally, um, fund it appropriately, and not get ourselves in any trouble, and not get ourselves off budget. We've done had a lot of years of planning, trying to get a lot of things on budget. And now if we do this, there's a very good chance things will get cut and we won't have things on budget so that we can keep our budget in a straight path. So, thank, thank you, you, Mr. Hoskins. Others? Mrs. LeClaire. Um, well, if we knew what we, if that the state was going to cut funding a month ago when we passed the budget, I would not have voted for the budget as it was passed. I would have cut the budget more. And I believe many of us would have considered that because there's a limit on how much we can increase the tax rate. Uh, so I don't see any difference on passing it tonight or passing it next week. I would still set it at the same amount. Um, I would not increase the mill rate. Thank you, Mrs. LeClaire. Anyone else? Mr. Matola. Um, I guess I get back to my original comment where I have a concern that we're not following the law. Um, and I understand, based on your comments, Mr. Flynn, that over any given year, different things can happen during the, the course of a budget over a fiscal year, and you could have shortfalls and so on and so forth. But the difference is we have the ability in the next week or two to know what we're going to be getting from the state of Connecticut. That's the big difference um, from a scenario where, you know, we pass a budget and then something bad happens during the fiscal year and we have to have to juggle. So that, that's the concern I have. And um, now, I, I, if it's appropriate right now, we'd like to make a motion to postpone. Um, it's certainly appropriate. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm going to uh, make a motion to, to postpone voting on item uh, number one uh, to consider and set the mill rate for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2016 and ending June 30, 2017. I make a motion to postpone that till our next meeting, which is May 17th. Is that correct, Mr. Mayor? That was the date. Yes. Okay. So I'm not Mr. Mayor, but that was the date. Aaron. <laughs> was that the date? That was the date. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I directed it to you. But <laughs> no problem. Um, so I'm, I may, I'd like to make that motion. I just, I just made it. Thank you, Mr. Matol. Do we have a second? Mr. Hopkins seconds that motion. The motion is now before us. Any discussion, comments, concerns about that motion? No comments? Seeing none, I'm going to call a, call a vote. All in favor of delaying the, delaying the vote on the mill rate setting to date certain our quarterly meeting on May 17th, raise your hands. Two. All opposed? Five. The motion fails. So the, the mill rate item is back before us. At this point, any other questions, comments, concerns? Do we have any motions? I have a motion, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to set the mill rate at 0 0.02545. Did he say that correctly, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Do we have a second to that motion? We have a second by Mr. Brown on this motion. That item is now before us. Yes. The that's the original one. It is. Yeah. Yes. It is. Okay. Yeah. All in. Okay. Any questions, comments, concerns on this motion? I have Mr. A question. Hawkins. I have a question. Please. Um, I have a question, Mr. Mayor, and this refers to your presentation earlier. What would the mill rate be? if we presumed that we were getting 2.3 million, that our deficit was going from the state funding was going to be 2.1 million, which I think was the figure you were using. The 2.3 million, you mean, or the 2.1 that I calculated? I'll ask, ask Mr. Mayor what he was presuming. He used the 2.3, and if you go to page scheduled G, okay. he's factored that in there, correct, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. That's 25.64. He referred it. 
referred to earlier. So we're at uh, 2564. If we go all the way, if we go the halfway, as which would be your number, Mr. Flynn, that would be 2553. Uh, oh, okay, thank you. Thanks for that additional information. And I'm sorry, the, the number proposed by Mr. Walsh was? 25454. Five, four. All right. Okay. 45. 2545. 2545. 2545. Five, four, five. Four, five. Five, five. Five, five. Five, five. Five, Thank you, Mr. Um, I'm going to make a motion to amend Mr. Walsh's motion to adjust the mill rate to 2564. Do I have a second for your motion? Mr. Matola, the motion is before us as amended. Do we have any questions, comments, concerns on this? Seeing none, I'm going to call for a vote on the amendment to the motion to raise the mill rate to 2564, correct? I said that correctly? Okay. All in favor of setting the mill rate at 2564? Two. All opposed? Five. The amendment fails, and the item back before us is to set the mail rate at 2545. Questions, comments, concerns on the item before us? Seeing none, I'm going to call for a vote, and this is to set the mill rate for the fiscal year 2017 for the town of Fairfield at 2545. All in favor? Opposed? The motion carries 5 to 2. The mill rate for the next fiscal year has been set. Thank you. At this point, I'm going to call for a, a five minute recess. We've been going for quite some time. And we'll come back in just five minutes and finish up the rest of the agenda items. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting back into, uh, into order. And item number four is to here consider and improve the appointment of the auditors for fiscal year 2016. Mr. Mayor, you want to walk us through this one, please? Uh, our Cohen Resnick, our auditors, uh, Joseph Santafani is, is the partner. Uh, we're required every year to, uh, by the end of May, to, uh, to notify the state as to who we are selecting to audit, uh, to be the uh, designated auditor for the town for the following fiscal year. And um, Ms. Bossy and I uh, work well. We're happy and appreciative of Cohen Resnick's, and we're recommending that the board uh, appoint them uh, for our auditor for fiscal year 2017. At this point, I'm just going to briefly ask um, Mrs. LeClaire, who's the chairperson of our audit committee, if she has any thoughts on this item or any things she'd like to share with us. Um, we really haven't discussed anything changing. Um, usually it takes some time if you want it to change. So at this late date, I think we really have to keep the same auditor. Um, and I think we've been fairly happy with them. So I... I approve it. I just have one question for Mr. Mayor, and that is, is the amount, in, did they give us an engagement letter yet, and is it the same amount that we put in the budget? No, the, the amount that's in the budget is actually a little bit less than last year as a result of negotiations, but I do not have a formal engagement letter yet. Okay. But the amount's been agreed upon, the okay. reduced amount. Mr. Walsh, you had a question? And that was, I had the same question. So we, you have a verbal agreement with Mr. Senefani on the amount? Any other questions, comments, or concerns from this board on this item? Seeing none, I'm going to ask you to put it before us, Mr. Brown, for a vote. Do I have a second, Mr. Walsh? Okay, all in favor of appointing Cone Resnick for the next budget, for the next audit? Those opposed, abstentions, that item carries. Thank you. Um, item number five. And thank you all. Thank you. And please tell Mr. Senefani, as I know you will. Um, Item number five, to here consider and approve the transfer of funds from IT contingency to IT capital outlay for purchases in the amount of $90,000. Mr. Mayor, you want to walk us through this, please? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Signatelli will walk through the uh, oh, thank specifics you. on it. Uh, one correction in the agenda, and it's, it's my error. It, it has to come from the, uh, the town's contingency account, not oh. the IT. It was actually moved into the... Uh, regular contingency account uh, this year, $134,000. Thank you for the change. 
You're up. Hello, how was everyone? <laughs> Um, basically, we're looking for the funding that was removed from last year's budget project process and put into the contingency fund to basically fund the programs, um, basically the replacement schedule that we had going into the year. The capital outlay was cut approximately in half, a little, a little bit more actually was taken out of the uh, from the actual capital outlay and put into contingency. Uh, I've put together a schedule um, which shows the purchases that we'll be making. Uh, with the it's ninety thousand uh, dollars, roughly is the number. Um, I do actually have an, a a latest best effort to the uh, schedule that was just sent out. Uh, the backup, um, one of the quotes changed, very minor, um, went from about fifteen thousand up to about sixteen thousand. That should easily still be absorbed into that number of ninety thousand. Are there questions, comments on the schedule that was provided? Or any thoughts on this item? Seeing none, I'm going to call this for a vote. Mr. Brown, Mr. Walsh, thank you. All right, actually, I'll take Mr. Hopkins on this one. Thank you, Mr. Hopkins. Um, so the item before us is to hear, consider, and approve the transfer of funds from the town's contingency account to IT capital outlay for purchases in the amount of $90,000. To approve this, all in favor? Opposed, abstentions, thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks for all your hard work pitching in during the budget process and for working with us as well on the, the replacement of the laptops and, and doing that virtually. It was good work, so thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, item number six, this is to consider and approve the minutes of meetings uh, dating from February 3rd all the way through March 31st, which really was the entirety of the budget process. Um, we can take these individually. First of all, let me put this before us. Can I have a motion to put all these before us? Mr. Brown, seconded by Mr. Matola. Um, we can take these individually so that people that weren't there for individual nights are not approving minutes for nights that they weren't there. If that oh, um, is good for everybody. In general, did anybody have any problems with the minutes as they were drafted? Any comments or concerns on the minutes? I just want to get it out on the table. Okay, seeing none, I'm going to call these in order and let's just roll through them. Uh, to approve the minutes of February 3rd, all in favor? Any opposed? None. February 16th, in favor? You said February 3rd, it's February 2nd. Oh, sorry, February 2nd. Thank you. February 16th, it's wrong on the agenda. February 16th, in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? We're looking for the abstentions, I believe. March 1st, the minutes of March 1st, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? March 3rd, all in favor? Opposed? Would, um, or abstentions? Mr. Matola, is you, are you abstaining? You're in favor, okay. I'm abstaining from March 3rd. Okay, and that's for both of those, the special and the combined. Um, March 8th, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? March 10th, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Mr. Matola, are you? Okay. I'm mucking up the works here, pal. Okay, March 15th, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? March 16th, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? March 19th, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? One abstention, Mr. Brown. March oh, wait, the 19th, I wanted to abstain. Okay, so two abstentions. Sorry. On the, the 19th, 19th, we have two abstentions. Yeah. Yes. March 21st, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions, Mr. Brown. And March 31st, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? That works. So we are done with item number six. Deb, did you get all that? Thank you. Um, item number seven is to hear, consider, and act upon any other communications. Mr. Mayor, do we have any? I don't know of any off the top. Of I know of nothing, sir. Okay. My apologies, guys, uh, um, on, the FUD, uh, on the Fairfield Ludlow High School Building Committee. Certainly if I had known that we had a conflict with, um, before or earlier today, with Dr. Title and the Board of Education, that wouldn't have been on the agenda. I did put them off from the April meeting, and they were very accommodating. Um, to that, I thank them to that. I thought in the fog of the budget process, 
that that wasn't going to be a good outcome. I thought it, w it would just get convoluted and messed up in the, in the budget process. So I was happy that they worked with Mr. Mayor and I uh, to accommodate our request that we put that off. I also want to thank everybody. Um, this has been a very contentious several weeks um, at the state level. And it's been very nerve wracking at the town level. And not to pat ourselves on the back, that's not what I'm trying to do. But um, we were put as a town in a very difficult position with no right or wrong answers. Just where our fate wasn't our own and where somebody else was um, making decisions um, regardless of what it meant to our community. And we all come at it from different ways and what we think is best. Um, but at the end of the day, I know that all of us around this table specifically, and I would include others at the other town bodies, are just trying to do what we think is right for the town. Uh, and I think it's exactly by not doing that and not looking long term, that's what we've done wrong by the state. So I thank everybody for their, um, their comments, their thoughts, and their um, goodwill as we've gone through this process. Does anybody have any other comments they'd like to make? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Go with Mr. Becker on this. Go with Mr. Hopkins. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.